but he had just flown from the Middle East. He didn't have anything to eat or drink that morning, and he had become dehydrated. But I guess he's the one that I would, I would just right off the top of my head. And I, I, I guess if I seriously thought I could give you some others, but right now I think he is uh, probably the one I admire the most. Yes, Debbie. Yes, Senator, um, so much of our state spending is mandated by the federal government and it's really tying our hands. We're having a tough time and we have to cut areas that we really don't want to cut because the feds tell us we can't cut certain areas. Do you have any recommendations? I know we've, we've filed a lawsuit. I, I don't know where that stands, but any other recommendations? I think we just have to keep fighting. I, 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 the, the mandates, are we, John Kyle and I fought against. We're Federalists. Meaning of a Federalist is that you believe that least government at the highest level is the best government, and local government is the best government, closest to the people, and that those uh, uh, responsibilities and authority that uh, are basically belong to the state, not to the federal government. Federalists. So, um, we have to try to cut back on those, but we've got to get through between now, a little straight talk, we've got to get through between now and November. We're going to see quite an election coming up, and we're going to try to roll some of that back. But one of the lessons of history that I'm very disturbed about is that when you uh, um, institute entitlement programs, which almost always then mean mandates to the states, such as Medicaid, and I'm not against them, those entitlements become very popular and are very hard to reverse or even pair or bring under control. Um, the, I'm sure you remember the Medicare prescription drug program. I voted against it, not because I thought that certain seniors didn't need access to prescription drugs, but it was a trillion dollar debt, a trillion, un trillion dollars unpaid for, on the next generation of Americans. And so, at least if we're going to take up the role of government in areas we think is responsibility of those who need government intervention, at least we ought to pay for it. And so, I, I, look, when you look at Obamacare, 2,733 pages, which we are still diagnosing. By the way, I've read it three times. But if you've ever read one of these bills, you know how obtuse they in fashion they write it. We're still going to be finding mandates on the states and in and the towns and the cities on in that bill. So but all I can say is elections have consequences. And there's another election coming up, thank God. And I, I we're not here in a partisan fashion. But the reality is that this administration is governing from the left and America is the right of center nation. And that's why I think you're seeing the frustration anger that we were seeing in this country because it's not in keeping with the majority of, of, the, of the country. But we'll keep trying to trying to keep fighting back, Debbie, uh, and, and I, I strongly oppose the, these mandates. But also, by the way, if I may show, a, maybe it's not appropriate, but sometimes, uh, as in California, and has happened here, where the voters mandate certain spending, that also makes it for more difficulties in legislature. Agree with that? Yes. Right tomorrow said, hey, we need $850 billion. We want to cash in all of these 
uh, Treasury notes that we bought, that it could have catastrophic consequences. So, but the Chinese aren't going to do that because that would be so harmful to, to their economy. But let me tell you my worry. My worry is that we have to keep borrowing money. And people all over the world and institutions and Americans hold these notes, okay? And so, after a while, if you borrow so much money, there's only so much money available in the world. And you borrow so much, then it crowds out the private investor. The private investor doesn't have access to that money. You can't borrow it because our federal government is, and it's much better terms than the private investor. So when you crowd out the private investor getting capital, then of course that capital doesn't go into plant creation, jobs, et cetera. So then what does the country do? The country, when it masses these huge debts, can only really do two things. One, let inflation run, and that has happened when Ronald Reagan took office. We had inflation of 21%. Uh, let inflation run, which debases the currency, then the real uh, cost of those debts is, uh, is lower. But what does inflation do to the average citizen? The greatest enemy of middle America is inflation. People have savings that are eaten away by inflation. People have investments that are eaten away by inflation. And so I worry about at the basement of the currency, inflation, and the greatest enemy of middle-income America as we make these adjustments. But Chinese should not be owning this money. It's a terrible situation, but it doesn't bother me in the short term nearly as much as what happens over time if we keep having to borrow so much money to pay a one point. The, the debt this year is 1.4 trillion. Next year, 1.5 trillion. We've never seen numbers like this. We've never seen it. And by the way, I just saw on the way in a small item. They're gonna, uh, there's a, on, the, on the Blackberry, uh, the stimulus money, $67 million of stimulus money, I believe that's the number. Maybe it's 20 some, what was it? Where stimulus money from? Gonna be given to an Indian casino uh, in uh, Connecticut. You know how poor they are. How much was it? $50 million of stimulus money is going to be given to that tribe to build a community center. And their revenues last year, I think, were over a billion dollars in gambling revenue. That's that's your tax dollars at work. Anyone? Yes, sir. Senator, uh, going back to immigration, I read in the newspaper this morning where uh, the fence was allowed for one and a half million dollars per mile, and I up to over fifteen million dollars per mile. Who's doing the oversight? Well, obviously, there's a great deal of waste, and um, a, a lot of the fence has been built. And but some, a lot of the fence is not as sturdy and as uh, strong as we need it. And that it, one of the reasons why the fence costs as much as it does is because of a thing called Davis Bacon. It's a law that was passed back in the 1930s that requires a government contract to go to the quote, prevailing wage. That adds 20 to 30 percent to the cost of the defense right there. By the way, could I mention an uh, item about the, uh, about the oil spill? There's a thing called the Jones Act, which also was passed in the 1930s. It was, it was, we went through a wave of protectionism in this country which prohibits any foreign 